One thing that people always say about Long Beach Island is that it inspires them. Some people are inspired to lay in a hammock. That's cool. In the last few years, I feel like there's been this new movement. People are inspired to create things with meaning, festivals and food, architecture, design, especially art. And it's not just the young artists, there's a newfound respect for the makers who have been here and they're feeding off each other. Take Jared and Jesse Temple. I mean, look at these two. They live in Beach Haven. They have a company together called Bunkerfish. Jesse has always been an artist, and Jared always worked for his family's construction company. But together, they've created enough of a following with their art, furniture, and collaborations that they can support themselves here on what they make. I graduated from Beach Haven Elementary School with like nine kids. After school is always riding your bike or skateboarding or building forts in the dunes or surfing. We would come here in the summers when I was growing up. We had this 80s station wagon with the wood paneling. It just had a tape player in it. My mom put on the Beach Boys when we got to the Y in the road at Magnolia Road in Pemberton because I was like, okay, now we're going to the beach. It was always just my favorite place in the world. I never wanted to leave. After I graduated college at UArts in Philly, I got back in touch with my teacher, Julie Goldstein. I started apprenticing with her at her shop, Pine, that she was opening in Ship Bottom. Played with a couple ideas about going away to college. I was like really asking my dad for advice, and he's like, well, you know, your great-grandfather was a carpenter. Your grandfather was a carpenter builder. You know, why try to reinvent the wheel? We met down here through friends. Yeah, I would stop in Pine. We started hanging out just as friends, and we just ended up never stopping hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> no, seven years later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice, my honey. <laughs> we got married last August, and the old saying is you go to what you focus on, and if you picture it in your mind hard enough, you actually do go to it. So. Um, I think that's what's happening. Yeah. It was just like one idea after another, like, kind of like domino effect of like, okay, well, I'm doing chalkboard murals. And then I was like, okay, well, he's a builder. We could make signage for people. And that turned into, we could make furniture. And then it was just like a light bulb went off. And <laughs> I can make t-shirts, I can do designs in watercolor and have them printed on t-shirts. You know, we got some really good feedback and that was exciting. We were having a lot of fun doing it and it just spiraled. I just love painting things that make me happy. The way water looks at a certain time of the day when it's just so sparkly, little bits of wildlife down here, or like the way dune grass is blowing. It's like I know these things make me happy, so they must make other people happy too. It's really inspiring to live in a place where there's so many people using their talents and not neglecting them. I think when you have that and you've got talent down here, it's just a fuel for fire. I think it's just because there's so many great people that live in this area that are really talented. Everybody is so supportive of one another. It's super cool. It's like such a special place. There's like some fresh life being pumped into the veins of the island. It's, uh, it's really, really inspiring. Kathy Engelson, on the other hand, has some history. She lives in the same house she grew up in on a killer little wooded lot in Surf City. She's built a reputation painting scenery, historic landmarks, and local businesses. She does watercolors, acrylics, and oil paintings, but all of her work is based on that inspiration from this area. I grew up here in Surf City. This place was desolate. We would run around the natural fields, make little bridges to go across the streams, and we'd go sledding down sand dunes too. We sure were outside all of the time. I started to paint very young. My mom was a teacher at the Beach Haven Elementary School, where I went to school from 1942 to 1947. Our teachers always had an art period. At the same time, the Arts Foundation was opening. So we had the influence of art on the island way back.
I was always happy painting or beautiful landscape in this area, but I was hired in the 70s to paint two panorama murals for a McDonald's. They wanted buildings, and so I painted all the buildings on Long Beach Island. So that, that sort of developed and my career took off. People would ask me to paint their home or the lighthouse or the shack. I like to recreate history because I love history. I like to paint scenes that bring back really good memories for people. There are such charming little exquisite places where people enjoy the summer with each other and their neighbors. And so I try to make those as accurate as I can. I think when you're raised in an isolated area, your, your mind, your imagination could really develop. And it's a comfortable life here. It's great living here in Surf City. These are just a few stories from the Long Beach Island region. Keep an eye out for countless more in future episodes when we start scratching just beneath the surface.